Hi guys, before diving into this video, let's explore a common scenario. You are building a customer portal or a sales dashboard that requires users to log in with their Salesforce credentials and get data of top accounts and contacts from Salesforce. To implement this, you will need to create a login with Salesforce button that connects to your Salesforce org and authenticates users. But how do we make that happen securely and efficiently? For that, we need to understand about OAuth 2.0. OAuth 2.0, which stands for Open Authorization, is a widely adopted authorization framework that allows applications to access resources from another service on behalf of the user. Think of it as a secure way to hand over limited access without giving away your credentials. In our case, it's how client apps get access to Salesforce APIs securely. It's important to note that OAuth 2.0 is not an authentication protocol. It doesn't tell you who the user is, but it simply says this app has permissions to act on this user's behalf. It's all about authorization, which is granting specific access to specific data. So how does OAuth 2.0 actually work? Imagine a user wants a third party app to access their Salesforce data. Here's what happens behind the scenes. First, the app, which is known as a client, must register with Salesforce authorization server to receive a client ID and client secret. These are like app's username and password used to identify itself during requests. When the user tries to connect their Salesforce account, the client app sends an authorization request to the authorization server. This includes the client ID, the redirect URL where the Salesforce should send the response and the scope which is the kind of access the app is requesting. Then the user also known as the resource owner is redirected to a Salesforce login or a consent screen. So if they approve the request, the authorization server proceeds. Depending on the OAuth flow being used, Salesforce responds with either an access token or an authorization code which the app exchanges for token. Sometimes a refresh token is also included allowing the app to get new access tokens without asking for user consent again. The client app then uses the access token to make authenticated requests to the resource server, in this case Salesforce APIs acting on behalf of the user. Access tokens are usually short-lived for security and when they expire, the app can use the refresh token to get a new one without bothering the user again. Salesforce offers various OAuth flows tailored for different use cases. For our scenario, we will be using the OAuth 2.0 web server flow. This flow is based on the authorization code grant type where Salesforce provides an authorization code after the user grants access. Our application then exchanges this code for an access token which is used securely to access Salesforce APIs and fetch the required data. Let's implement the button now. We have a simple HTML and JavaScript application with a login with Salesforce button. When the button is clicked, it calls the handle button click function defined in the index.js. This initiates the step 1 of the OR 2.0 web server flow which is requesting an authorization code. To initiate step 1, we need a few key components. First, there is the authorization endpoint which is your Salesforce org's URL with the path services or to authorize. When you try to request an authorization code from Salesforce without including the required parameters like client ID, redirect URI and response type, you will immediately run into an error. That's because Salesforce needs to verify the identity and the intent of the application making the request. To establish a valid connection, we use a connected app or an external client app which acts as a secure bridge between the external application and Salesforce. It registers the app's details, enforces OAuth policies and validates every request. Now let's create an external client app. The most important part is configuring the OAuth settings where we set the callback URL. It's the URL where Salesforce sends the authorization code as a parameter after successful authentication. For now this points to our localhost environment. We also define the scope which controls the level of access granted to users and determines which part of Salesforce data the app can interact with. Let's give full access. Let's uncheck PKCE extension for now and once created, we verify our identity and get consumer key and secret. Now let's add the external client app details to the authorization endpoint as URL parameters. We pass the client ID which is a consumer key of the app followed by the redirect URI which is a callback URL that must match with the one configured in the external client app. 
Finally, we include the response type which specifies the OR 2.0 grant type. Since we are requesting an authorization code, we set this to code. Let's combine all our parameters to get our final authorization endpoint. Now let's see the same implementation in JavaScript. Here we are constructing the URL and on button click we are just redirecting to the authorization URL. Now let's go to our website and attempt to login. Yes, it's working. We will now try to enter our credentials which is our step 2, user authentication and authorization. After authentication, we must authorize access permissions for the applications. Upon successful authorization, Salesforce grants an authorization code as a parameter in the callback URL. This completes step 3, Salesforce grants authorization code. Now, to actually access Salesforce data, we need the access token, which is our step 4, requesting access token. We will do a POST request to Salesforce to the endpoint services OAuth2 token and pass the authorization code granted. Along with the code, we pass the grant type which is the authorization code and we pass the client ID of our external client app along with the client secret which needs to be securely stored in our application. Finally, we pass in the redirect URI as well. Now, if we do a POST request from our JavaScript application, we will get a course error. Let's implement this in JavaScript. We have created a fetch access token method that makes a POST request with all the required parameters to exchange the authorization code for an access token. This method is triggered on Windows load event when the code parameter is present in the URL. Let's look at the error which states that access to our Salesforce endpoint from origin local host has been blocked by course policy. Now to understand this error, let's understand about course. Cross-origin resource sharing is an HTTP-based header mechanism that allows a server to indicate any origins other than its own from which a browser should permit loading resources. By default, browsers only allow network requests from the same origin, which means localhost 5500 can only communicate with localhost 5500. In order to make requests to other origins, like in our case from localhost to Salesforce, cross-origin resource sharing must be enabled on the server. We have to configure all the origins that are allowed to make a request from different origins. Now, if we add localhost 5500 as an allowed origin and make a request, then it works. In Salesforce, we can configure this in setup by creating a new allowed origin. We should also enable course for OAuth endpoints to work. Course only applies to browser-based JavaScript apps. Server-side apps like Node.js aren't affected as it's a browser mechanism. Now, after adding the course origin, if we try to get the access token, yes, it works and we get the access token. But if you try to take a closer look at the JavaScript code, you'll notice a critical security flaw. We are including the client secret directly in the frontend code and using it in the post request. This exposes the client secret to anyone who inspects the network calls, compromising the security and integrity of the external client app. Ideally, such sensitive operations should be handled by a secure backend server that safely stores the client secret and makes the token request. Now, let's quickly build an express server that acts as a secure backend where we safely store our client secret and handle the POST request to Salesforce for access token. Once we receive the token, we have two options. Either pass back the access token or store it on the server and use it to make Salesforce API request directly and return only the necessary data like accounts, contacts and other information to the client. However, this adds additional complexity and responsibility on the server to securely store the access token and client secret. That's exactly where PKCE, proof key for exchange code comes in. It allows us to securely perform the OAuth flow without needing to store or transmit the client secret by using a code challenge and code verifier. Let's see how PKCE works. In the PKCE enhanced web server flow, the core security mechanism lies in the relationship between two values that is the code verifier and the code challenge. When the client app begins the OAuth process, it first generates a high entropy random string called the code verifier. This value is then hashed using the SHA-256 algorithm and Base64 URL encoded to produce a corresponding code challenge. We will include this code challenge along with the other necessary parameters in the initial authorization request to Salesforce. Salesforce stores this challenge securely on its end and grants the authorization code. In the POST request, we will remove the client secret and include the original code verifier. 
At this point, Salesforce regenerates the hash from the code verifier and compares it to the previously stored code challenge. If they match, the request is considered as valid and Salesforce issues an access token. If they don't, the request fails with an invalid request error. To implement this in JavaScript, we can create our own code verifier something like this by using the browser's built-in crypto API to generate a secure random string and hash it with SHA-256 algorithm to create the PKCE code challenge. We can also use the endpoint services OAuth2 PKCE generator to get the code verifier and challenge. We will use the generate PKCE codes function to create the code challenge and code verifier. The code challenge will be included in the authorization code request while the code verifier will be stored in session storage so we can retrieve it later and include it in the post request to exchange the authorization code. Before trying out, let's go to our external client app and enable the require PKCE extension and uncheck require secret for web server flow. Now let's log in. And yes, we can see the access token in our console. Now, to summarize this video, we have explored multiple ways to integrate Salesforce using OAuth 2.0 web server flow. We saw how making direct front-end JavaScript calls is not recommended as it exposes sensitive information like client secret. While using a backend server is a more secure option, it adds complexity and requires you to manage and store secrets carefully. Another consideration is PKCE which eliminates the need to store a client secret making it ideal for public clients like single page web applications or mobile apps where you can't safely store a client secret. If you found this video helpful, give this video a like, drop your questions in the comments and consider subscribing. Thanks.